you know so we don't need to be scared the heaven and earth belong to god so we are god children so whatever we have it belong to god when we know how to say lord this is your money the first month when i receive the lord thank you for this whatever it is yours the lord multiplies the law to the lord your god belong the heavens and the highest heavens the earth and everything in it even first chronicle says yours o lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours yours o lord is the kingdom you are exalted as the head over all wealth and honor come from you you are the ruler of all things when we have this right concept of money you know we are not scared to see the how amazing the word of god says wealth and honor come from you who has a claim against me that i must pay everything under heaven belongs to me one day these guys came and said and can't your master pay the tax jesus looked at the disciples and said hey who should pay the tax is it the owner or the the citizens he said the citizens but i am the exu i i can be excused because i am the owner but even anyway they are asking for they to say go and get the first catch of the fish open it you will find go and give one for you and one for me no the heaven belongs to the lord earth and even there is money in the belly of the fish you know the, lord, the, the, the the remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth you know the lord makes poor and makes rich he brings low and lifts up is the lord who makes somebody rich and somebody poor if we are trusting in god i am not preaching a prosperity gospel of course we are looking into that money will make you happy the, another the, the myth of the devil you know today that's what a lot of prosperity gospel preachers they say if you want happiness come you know money will make you happy no money will make people miserable today 70% of people in the west are using sleeping pills they can't sleep without sleeping pills you know that yes it is true a friend of mine doing sociology you know he did a phd research on uh, wealth and he proved the case in his empirical research saying that 70% of people are using um, um, sleeping pills he did a case study on uh, millionaires who are very rich and he come up with a kind of empirical research saying that these are the miserable people under the sun many of the rich people they don't have a peaceful life they are they the yesterday I was watching dhiru by ambani one of the top most you know the 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 wealthiest person in india and of course in the world now he was with his tears because his son the only son who is going to be the next prince of that wealth the kingdom of the wealth with so many health problems and you know he was like this much size and you know the dhiru bhai ambani he was uh, weeping the i could see the tears on him because he had a lot of money you know he don't have peace of mind so money cannot give you happiness but i have seen some people the godly people their children are on the death bed they are on the death bed but the smiley face i know satuluri edgar in hyderabad one of the outstanding missionary a great man of god in hyderabad he had a native mission movement he started and suddenly he got um, some kind of paralysis and parkinson disease he was on the death bed several months and years he was on death bed in the icu and uh, he ministered to hundreds of nurses doctors and they got surprised to see how can you happy how can you uh, have that kind of smiley face and he started talking everybody you know still he is with that sickness but he is still ministered to people he don't have money he don't have a lot of good health but he's so cheerful minister to people that's what you know ecclesiastes says those who love money will never have enough but how meaningless to think that well bring true happiness the more you have the more people come to help you spend it so what good is wealth except perhaps to watch it slip through your fingers people who work hard sleep less whatever they eat little or much but the rich 
seldom get a good night's sleep. That's what I said. Rich people hardly they sleep. The more money, the more dissatisfaction sometimes. I'm not saying that money is bad, but we need to know how to handle that money. So that's what you know, the, the writer of the Ecclesiastes, Solomon, says, all just like a chasing after the wind. You cannot you know, hold the wind. You cannot uh, you know, chase it. The more you run, the more it will go away from you. So the third myth about the money is money is evil. Some super spiritual people, they say money is evil. They are uh, super spiritual, spiritual. They impose their um, unbiblical spirituality on people and make missionaries messed up lives. No, no, money. we need to have a comprehensive understanding of money. If money is the root of all evil, why do churches beg for, for, for money? Money is not the root of all evil, but the root of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is good. You know? The love of money is the root of all evil. So we need to have a right calculation of money. So we need to go. And the other myth is God wants you to be rich. You know, the other day said, C.S. Lewis said, the devil comes with pairs, either this or that. There are some who goes around and say, oh, you are going to become rich all the time talking about money. There are some super spiritual people, they say, you don't ask money, money is evil. And you know, in India particularly, I conduct a lot of pastor seminars, you know, the pastors, some kind of pseudo spirituality pastor means you should have a store and clothes and you know, uh, a kind of bag all the time begging no money telling all the stories of my child who don't have a money and uh, no bottle of milk and all the time telling all the begging stories poor stories they look at super spiritual no not at all we need to have a comprehensive understanding of money god wants you to be rich this is another extreme uh, no, talking about money. Today a lot of literature came and preachers started talking about God wants you to be rich. A lot of sermons on this. God wants you to be rich. Uh, God wants you to be happy. How you get happiness? By richness. God wants you to be rich. You know, all these titles, books, preachings are everywhere. Prosperity theology, the dirty title secret today. You know, the new, uh, so a lot of you know, going around. The New Testament um, uh, repeats all of the broad principles that we find in the Old Testament with respect to property and wealth with one notable exception. No Christian is ever promised and guaranteed material prosperity as a result of adequate obedience to Christ. Bible never guarantee you that if you are really obey the Lord you will be so rich. You know, Jesus said, if anybody would come after me, he would deny himself, take up my cross daily and follow me. So Bible never guarantee that you will be rich all the time. Now, if it is God's will, he will make you rich, but for his sake. So the fifth myth is money is the measure of your life. That's what today the mission context, even the Christians measure others. If I am rich. In the church, I'll t tomorrow, immediately I'll become the deacon of the church. Particularly in India, this kind of you know, mentality, uh, slavish mentality, because India was ruled by these Brahmins, several, even till today, the Dalits were oppressed. Uh, centuries, centuries together, they have this kind of uh, the oppressive context all the time. Uh, receiving context. Even now after getting salvation, redeeming from the power of that kind of clutches, still today the Indian church is like the begging attitude to the white people. If a white man comes, either it is in Australia, in New Zealand, or America, or Canada, or you know, whatever it may be, if a white man comes to India, conduct a pastor seminar, they just look and they, they, they just take it as heaven, from heaven. Maybe tomorrow, either Dr. Marasu or uh, um, or, uh, um, or myself or my brother Kudumala or any one of us go and conduct a seminar, I don't think so they will sit and listen for some time. This kind of slavish mindset. So because they think they want, oh, these white people have a lot of money, they'll give us. So money is the measure of your life. If a white man comes, they give immediately the pulpit or no, they will give a lot of garland, some kind of respect. So we have this kind of faulty understanding people and the money and the leadership. 
So if somebody is a white man, he will get immediately the higher hierarchy in the leadership. No, money is not the measure of your life. So we need to have, we corrected ourselves, we need to correct others. Then he said to them, Luke 12, 15, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Spirituality has nothing to do with your abundance of possessions. Spirituality is something the inside, it, it is a heart matter. So these are the myths about the money, it's your money, no, it's not my money, it is the Lord's. Money will make you happy. No, money will not make me happy. The Lord will make me happy. Money is evil. No, money is not evil. Money is good. No, how we look at money is matters So, Lord. God wants you to be rich, of course, but God wants you to be rich in Christ. God wants you to take the cross. Money is the measure of your life, not at all. Money, the Lord is the uh, measure of love. We looked at the negative aspect. Let's look at the positive aspect of money. Five truths about money. About money, God wants you to know. God cares more about your heart than your money. God cares more, cares more your heart than your money. Money is important, but the heart matters a lot. In the, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talked about the attitudes. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. The you know, heart matters a lot. It is the heart that needs a surgery. It is the heart that needs to be clean. It is the heart matters in the kingdom of God. When my heart is pure, everything will start working towards me. So Jesus whole teaching devoted towards the heart matters. The Lord, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Coming back to our text today, we read Nine, verse 19 onwards, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, as I said, I need to do some justice to the exposition of this text. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but 